Hi, I'm Lee Teschler, Executive Editor of Design World and EE World. And I'm Kelsey Ferrante, Associate Editor. In an effort to see how household items, such as light bulbs, might become part of the Internet of Things, we recently dissected what's billed as a smart light bulb. It is a Lightify Smart Connected LED bulb and gateway made by Osram Slovenia Incorporated. And to start things off, we were quite surprised at how long it took to set up the light bulb to do anything. Yeah, you bet. The installation process has the feel of something that requires an IT staff. It begins with downloading a smartphone app, setting up a password enabled account just to turn on a light bulb, mind you scanning in a barcode from the gateway, responding to a message sent to your email account, entering an enabling co code, giving the Lightify gateway the password to your household Wi-Fi, and waiting for protracted downloads of firmware updates for the light itself and for the gateway. To make matters slightly worse, the smartphone app is a bit buggy. Uh, the only way we could get it back on track after the firmware downloads was to power down the phone and restart. The whole thing took almost an hour to get through. But if you persevere through the whole procedure, you get a 60 watt equivalent LED bulb. You can dim and put on a time schedule from your smartphone, and whose color temperature you can adjust to provide a range of white light. But what I don't quite understand is the networking. There's this little rectangular box that plugs into the wall, and it's called a gateway. But if this light bulb uses your household Wi-Fi to make connections with the cell phone app, why do you need the gateway thing? Well, the gateway is necessary because the LED bulb is on its own wireless network separate from your household Wi-Fi. The gateway provides a link from the bulb network, which is actually a Zigbee network, to Wi-Fi. The idea is eventually you'll go out and buy other smart light bulbs or other smart gizmos and they'll communicate with the gateway that you bought when you bought the light bulb. But if you don't buy other smart gizmos to put on the gateway, it makes this a pretty pricey light bulb because the combination LED bulb and gateway will set you back about 50 bucks. Well, so much for setting up the network connections. What kind of hardware in the bulbs makes the wireless connections possible? Well, we'll start with the part of the circuit that powers the LEDs. The mechanical design approach is one we've seen in several brands of LED bulbs. It incorporates a metal heat sink to which mounts a metal plate holding the LEDs. The PCB holding the driver electronics is potted into the bulb base and the potting material provides some of the structural rigidity for the connection to the metal screw and sleeve and electrical contact. The PCB sits in a plastic sleeve that extends from the base and over the metal heat sink. The LED driver circuit is based around an SSL 21082AT LED driver IC from NXP. The switching power supply IC operates as a buck or step-down converter in boundary conduction mode. Boundary conduction mode refers to a scheme where the output inductor current is zero for a small period of time during each cycle, and that lets the circuit use smaller magnetic components and inexpensive switching diodes. Now, an interesting point concerns dimming the LED. The NXP driver allows LED dimming, but its built-in dimming function clearly won't play a part in the actual dimming of, the, of this bulb via wireless commands. That's because dimmable LED drivers all assume there's a triac dimmer in the light switch that's notching out part of the AC waveform. They examine the incoming AC wave to determine the phase angle of the notching, then adjust the current to the LED accordingly. But that's not what happens when the dimming is commanded by a smartphone app, as is the case here. The AC waveform at the bulb is unaffected. It's still a full sine wave. Instead, the wireless interface adjusts the pulse width modulation of the NXP switching IC to deliver the amount of light that the smartphone app commands. We're kind of guessing about exactly how dimming play takes place, but it seems to be by means of a connection to a pin labeled NTC on the SSL 21082AT chip. Though the NTC pin is normally for LED thermal protection, it can be used as an input to disable or enable light output using pulse width modulation. So it's likely the bulb's Zigbee radio uses that pin to dim the bulb. The bulb's on time can be adjusted through connections to another pin on the NXP chip called the TONMOD pin. 
thus it's likely that Zigbee radio manipulates this input as well for dimming or adjustments of bulb color temperature. That explains the dimming, but how do you change the color temperature of the LEDs? Well, that's an interesting question. The bulb can be adjusted from a warm 2700 Kelvin up to 6500 Kelvin, cool white color at any dimness level. How it manages this is a bit of a mystery, at least to me. Other LED bulbs that boast of color changing abilities adopt strategies such as using two kinds of LEDs with differing color temperatures or incorporating filters that mechanically rotate over top of the LEDs to change the color output. The Osram bulb doesn't do any of this. A quick look at the 14 LEDs on the Osram bulb reveals they're all wired in series, so they all energize when the bulb is on, regardless of the desired color temperature, and they all appear to be the same type. So the more usual methods of varying LED bulb color temperature are being used here. However, a key point to note is that the color of LED light is sensitive to heat, and heating in LEDs is sensitive to the width of the pulse with modulated currents driving the LED. So we might speculate that one possible way of adjusting LED color temperature could involve the judicious modification of current pulse times. A final point on the adjustable color temperature is that the Osram makes its own LEDs, not just the bulb the LEDs sit in. So it's possible a company has devised special devices able to change color temperature in response to some electrical parameter that isn't widely known. And if so, that would be a noteworthy development. So, how do the wireless commands get to the LED driver chip? Well, the network connections for the Osram bulb are made via circuitry on a separate circuit board that's attached to the PCB for the bulb electronics. The wireless board looks like completely different technology than what's driving the bulb. The PCB containing the wireless circuits uses super fine traces that are impossible to hand solder. The board material itself seems to be of a higher quality than that for the bulb. And the higher quality might be necessitated by the fact that the PCB incorporates a printed antenna. The wireless board protrudes out of a hole cut in the metal plate holding the LEDs. The portion of the PCB that sticks out of the hole contains a printed loop antenna. The main chip on this network board is a Marvel Zigbee 88MZ100 system on chip. The Zigbee networks the chip handles work in the 2.4 GHz ISM band. The 88MZ100 basically combines four separate chips, a Zigbee transceiver, a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M3 microcontroller, a DC-DC converter, and a 512 kilobit serial flash. And that brings us to the gateway. Right. The gateway device with which the bulb communicates contains four ICs. One is the Marvel Avastar system on a chip, which is basically a wide area LAN on a chip. It's a device through which the gateway connects to your household Wi-Fi. This Marvell chip serves as a direct conversion wide area LAN RF radio. For security, the chip implements some widely used encryption methods that include wired equivalent privacy with temporal key integrity protocol and others. The WLAN chip sits on the PCB inside the same metal shield as a Marvell 88MC200 microcontroller. This Marvell chip is another system on a chip incorporating 512 kilobit SRAM memory, 8 megabytes of on-chip serial flash memory, a digital to analog convertible module with 10-bit resolution, and an I-O interface. There's a second separate shielded area of the PCB, and inside this one is a Marvell A8MZ100 Zigbee microcontroller system on a chip. Uh, this, of course, is the controller handling the Zigbee network containing the LED light bulb and whatever else is networked in. Finally, there's a fourth chip on the board sitting by itself on the reverse side. It's a 32 megabit serial flash memory chip from Windbond Electronics Corporation. So you have two different radios on the gateway, one for the Zigbee network and one for the Wi-Fi. Does that mean there are two antennas? Well, actually the gateway board seems to contain three antennas. One is printed on the circuit board and looks to be a stub antenna. Its length is about that of a quarter wave for the 915 megahertz Zigbee band. Our guess is that it handles RF transmissions to the Zigbee devices on the network. The other two antennas are oddly shaped considering they are meant to detect electromagnetic energy in the ISM band. 
They're rectangular metal clip-like shapes that are soldered to the PCB. One seems to connect to the Zigbee transceiver, the other to the Wi-Fi circuit. Both are in series with devices that seem to be variable capacitors, likely put there to match antenna impedance to the input impedance of the Wi-Fi and Zigbee radios. Why would they use weird antennas like that? Well, that's a good question, and I don't really have an answer to that one, but the fact that Osram was compelled to add a variable tuning element to the antenna circuit may indicate that the two metal clips don't make particularly good ISM band antennas. If there are two clip antennas, maybe the old antenna joke applies. Two antennas met on a roof, fell in love, and got married. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was excellent. Uh, engineering jokes are great. That might apply <laughs> if they were both receiving antennas, but I suspect one of these is a transmitting antenna. Leave it to an engineer to take even a dumb joke seriously. And with that, we're out of time. You can see more teardown videos like this one on eeworldonline.com.